So this is the kind of uh, scraps that the, the dogs get. These are uh, old beef sausage or beef hot dogs, I think, and made. And the casing kept splitting. So we used them in chili for a while, and I think she just decided to give them up. There's uh, cracked eggs. These are beef bones. Anne was making pork stock. So, you know, these dogs get pl outside of kibble. They got bones. They got beef hot dogs. They got duck eggs, chicken eggs. Looks like some noodles. Accidentally a tea packet right there. Whoops. You know, they got lots. So, there's a lot to go around right here. These dogs are not suffering uh, <laughs> in this weather. This this 30 degree weather, I love it. I'm wearing a sweatshirt only, it feels so good. It's so nice that it's no longer like 20 below. You guys gonna be good? This is a new American shorthorn calf that we bought. I'm keeping him in the corral for about four days because I have to give him his second um, tetanus shot from when he was cut. And then, yeah, I don't, I don't wanna leave a calf alone. Oh, looks like they're, they wanna fight. I don't want to leave a calf alone, and I'm selling this ram sold. Looks like he's about ready to put down the hammer, so they'll figure each other out. You gonna be Boss Buster? I don't really name my cattle, but Doug thought Buster was a good name, and he's kind of got a Buster attitude. He was real calm at the place we bought him, and he's been kind of a fire fireball since. We brought him home. Kind of took him out of his element, I think. And you know, he'll calm down. But we'll see what they want to do. So, yep. Yeah, the big flock sire has been sold to a fellow up north who's looking to improve his genetics. He's got some uh he's got some horns in his katahdin suit and he wants to kind of you know improve what he has through breeding. So this guy will be going out the door sooner and later, I suppose. So, so you know, they have food and water, and they're going to have to just get used to each other. I can tell the ram's not pleased. I pulled him away from all the other sheep, but, you know. He's used to cattle, he lives with a steer in the off season, so it's not like he doesn't know how cow cattle are, but this guy's a bit of a banger, so he, I'm sure he's just a little thrown right now. Well, George, you knocked a Highland Bull off your feet. You can't handle one little short horn? You can tell which one has his, you know, George still has, he has three years of sheep testosterone in him, so he's going to put down the hammer. <laughs> he might be outweighed two to one here, but he's got the heart of a champion, this guy. I really like that ram. It's a shame I got to get rid of him. But. Well, everything's calmed down in here. I've been doing some halter training as just an experiment. I mean, he's just going to be a beef steer, but it's some, it's a skill I'd like to learn as far as uh, doing it to animals. Um, I don't know. He's only going to be in here for a day or two. I'm going to give him a shot, put his tag in his ear, and then uh, he'll go out with the main the main bunch. But you can see... Old George is calmed down. 
What a majestic lion looking guy, huh? He looks like a lion. And they've kind of gotten to understand each other a little bit. So I'm just running him through the head gate a few times so he can get used to it and understand he's not more powerful than it. And then um, I'll do a little halter training, meaning, you know, tie him up, you know, to where to probably the head gate so he can't get away. And that way he'll be easy to lead. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's not much to it. He's, he's settling in. All right.